Hey there, California 27. It's your Congressman Mike Garcia. I'm out here in Washington, D.C. in front of the, uh, the Library of Congress. Very cool building if you get a chance. By the way, if you ever want to come out and visit uh, the local area, we can set you up for tours for, uh, uh, for places like this. A lot of uh, opportunities out in Washington, D.C. to see cool things. Hey, this is our week in review. I want to just uh, highlight a few bills that we voted on and passed through the House this week and then talk about some of the things going on in California and in our district. Uh, but we did uh, pass uh, H, uh, House Res uh, 30, uh, which is a, a bill that ends this uh, ESG policy. Right now, the, the Biden administration has put some limitations on what companies can allow people to invest in for retirement accounts based upon uh, social justice and woke policies. Uh, this bill will prevent uh, those type of practices from, uh, from being uh, enforced, uh, giving the businesses more flexibility to invest uh, your retirement accounts uh, in, in things that uh, will hopefully make money as the, uh, the measure of merit there. Uh, the second bill was uh, the Rain in Inflation Act. And what this bill does is it forces the executive branch, every time there's an executive order from the president's office, to actually formulate a, a report and, in, and inform Congress on how much that executive order is going to either mitigate or aggravate inflation. Too many times the presidents are using uh, these, these executive orders to uh, impart new policies and support uh, new things that end up costing us as taxpayers a lot of money and ultimately aggravate inflation. That's been undocumented so far. The impacts of those things aren't really accounted for. Uh, and so the Rain In uh, Act will uh, prevent those things from uh, just going under the radar without accountability. Uh, and then the last piece of uh, uh, legislation, a very important piece of legislation, is something that we've been talking about for a while now uh, under the new majority, uh, this, this parental bill of rights. Uh, and it's very important, especially in California with bills like AB 1266 out there, that parents actually have rights uh, when it comes to their children, what their children are seeing in the classrooms, what what they're uh, being exposed to uh, in, in other areas of their curriculum. And so we, we did roll out and introduce uh, our Republican platform, uh, Parents' Bill of Rights this week. There'll be more information on our social media and website. You can go look at it. But it has a, 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 a few bullets that are very important. Parents have the right to know what their children are being taught. Uh, parents have the right to be heard. This isn't just uh, you know with the parent-teacher conferences, but also with school board hearings and, and continued dialogue. Parents shouldn't be treated as the enemies of school districts and school boards. They should be partners, uh, especially in their children's uh, educations. Uh, parents have the right to see the school budget and where these budgets are spending money, where the schools are investing. Parents have the right to protect their child's privacy, and parents have the right to keep their children safe. These are all pretty self-evident rights that we as parents uh, have uh, relative to our kids, uh, but there's been a war on parents, frankly, in our education system. And so this Parental Bill of Rights uh, will go a long way in ensuring uh, those rights are reinstated. Uh, so those are the legislative pieces. Uh, back in the district, I had an opportunity to meet uh, a former presidential candidate, uh, Steve Forbes. Everyone knows him as the billionaire, the, uh, the CEO of several companies, an investor. Uh, but he actually came to the Antelope Valley, the AV Edge event, uh, to highlight uh, what's going on with primarily with our economy and the inflationary pressures that we see. Uh, about 500,000 people left California last uh, year alone. Uh, but uh, the, the Antelope Valley is actually doing things very well. Santa Clarita is uh, doing things well in terms of its spending controlled budgets and response responsible uh, accounting. Uh, but Mr. Forbes reminded us of uh, why we have the inflation that we have. It's out of control spending. Uh, it's onerous policies and regulations. So we'll make that video available. Very good speech. I think all Americans, especially members of Congress, uh, should get smart on what uh, Steve Forbes uh, mentioned. Uh, we also celebrated the 10 millionth package being delivered through the, uh, the Palmdale Amazon uh, shipping facilities. That's a huge deal. Lots of jobs because of Amazon and the Antelope Valley. Uh, we need to continue to help them grow, and uh, as you know, that's uh, been a huge game changer in our way of life, having Amazon uh, shipping us uh, stuff on a daily basis in some cases. Uh, last uh, a bit of news, kind of bad news, not kind of really bad news, 232 pounds of fentanyl was seized in just one drug bust this past week. That's enough to kill about 50 million people, which is more than the, the, the population of California alone. This is a huge problem. The other statistic I heard in a hearing this week uh, was that uh, they, with, with 100,000 deaths of fentanyl last year, that's 30 times the number of people that were killed on 9-11, okay? Let that sink in. Last year, we had 30 times the number of people die of fentanyl uh, than, than we had people die in the terrorist attacks on 9-11. We have to secure our borders, folks. This is, this is a poison that's coming across our border. It's developed in, in the compounds, the, the base compounds are from China. 
being manufactured in Mexico, brought across our border unhindered, and it is killing Americans, 100,000 Americans, okay? You can tell people to stop using drugs, but they will not as long as this poison is, is in the system here, uh, in, in our country, in their systems, and very addictive like it is. Uh, the concentrations are getting more lethal. The number of pills coming across our borders is, is going higher in quantity and more people are getting away. We seized 232 pounds, but imagine the thousands of pounds of fentanyl that we have not seized that are getting into our local neighborhoods. Santa Clarita, Antelope Valley have some of the highest uh, death rates within LA County from fentanyl. We have to pay attention to this, parents. You have to get smart on this topic. Please follow us uh, and look for the warning signs, look for the apps, know what your children are doing, especially your 14 to 40 year olds uh, out there, I don't care how old they are, we can look out for them and make sure that they're not uh, taking this very dangerous drug. They don't even know they're taking fentanyl in some cases. They think it's uh, Prozac or Vicodin or something else. So uh, I know there's a vigil coming up in Santa Clarita in the, in the next week or so uh, to, to honor and memorialize those who have lost their lives and family members uh, who are still struggling with those losses uh, due to fentanyl. Uh, this is a huge national security crisis and it's killing hundreds of thousands of Americans every week. So we're gonna keep fighting that fight. Uh, we need folks to, to be aware of it, parents to uh, understand what's going on in their children's lives. Uh, and you have my commitment that we'll keep focusing on that here in DC. Take care guys, God bless, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the district. I'll be in DC here next week as well. Take care.